Dr. Brown? Yes, he's going to look at your lump. At the Bondi Clinic, Annie and 11 year old Pluto are waiting to meet an old friend. Good Pluto. The Dalmatian has been a regular patient of Chris's since he was just a puppy. In fact, he was the one who discovered Pluto's incredible talent. It was when Pluto was about, um, probably about a year and a half. He was in the studio and Dad had given me a sort of CD and I was listening to it and Pluto all of a sudden started making this amazing sort of howling noise and I actually thought he had appendicitis. So I called Chris and said, Chris, I think Pluto's dying in the studio. You better come quick. And Chris sort of said, oh, let me hear. And then Pluto sort of did it again. And Chris sort of said, it sounds to me like he's singing to the chorus. In fact, not in pain or in any way unhappy. He was nearly joining in the, uh, the song. But now Annie is worried his singing career might be in trouble. His voice has changed somewhat. He's gone from sounding like Jeff Buckley to Rod Stewart. So I thought it was time he came to visit Dr Chris. See, I thought it was Pluto, but I didn't hear anything. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Hi. I've brought your favourite patient in. Of course, cool, coming through. Come on. So what's the story? What, the record company needs a medical or something? Or what, <laughs> what is it? But I'm a little concerned. He's got a little lump in his throat. His singing has changed quite considerably. Well, he's actually not hitting the high notes. He's not hitting the high notes. In fact, there's quite a lot of kind of no notes happening sometimes. And I don't know whether it's just being an elderly gentleman or if there's something related to the lump or anything else more sinister. The lump, where's the lump? The lump's in his throat, sort of just below or around near the collar. You can feel it there. It's a decent sized lump, we're probably talking about two centimetres in diameter. Yeah. And it is sitting right in the middle there. While the location of this lump is making it easier to feel, where it is, is actually a worry for me because it's sitting right where you normally expect to see a dog's thyroid gland. And thyroid glands are notorious for becoming cancerous. Do you notice any other change apart from his voice not being his own? Is he okay with exercise? Well, he's, he is panting a lot more like these days, but I put that down to being an older dog, you know, in the heat. So he's a little bit more breathy, and as you can see, this sort of panting is happening. Yeah. A lump alone would be enough of a concern in an older dog, but add on top of that, the fact his voice has changed, and the fact he's now panting a lot more than he ever did, and Annie has serious reason to be concerned. Take a look at this. That's a king cobra. That's why they scare me. At the Australian Reptile Park, operations manager Tim Faulkner is concerned about one of his venomous snakes. This particular snake is normally cool, calm and quiet. But with that bit of skin stuck on his eye, he's a different animal because he's, he's blind in one eye, which for us makes it very, very scary and critical that we get it off. But before the scale can be removed, John has the dangerous task of catching the cobra. I'm going in. All right. OK. I wouldn't say that he's, he's mad. He knows what he's doing. But he's crazy to the point of view that, look at the size of that thing. Picking up a king cobra is scary. There's no doubt about that. I'm painfully aware that if the snake has enough latitude, it can easily turn around and bite, and it will be a highly venomous bite. Sit down. Good boy. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, 
Jeanette and Paul are desperate to get help for their Cocker Spaniel, Dusty. Dusty's had an ear infection for about three years. He's been treated all that time. It just seems to be getting worse. And now he's got some horrible growth in there. So we're just trying to work out what can be done about that. Hi, Jeanette. Yeah, Andrew. Marcheski. How are you? Paul. Paul. And who's this? Hey, Dusty. Dusty. Hey, Dusty. Hi. How you going? Oh, you do stink a bit. Yes, you do stink. Come on in. Oh, man. He's walked into the, to the consult room and the consult room just smells really bad. I'm afraid that's coming from Dusty's ear. Been infected for about three years, but Ooh. now he's got this horrible growth in there as well, which has okay. grown probably in about six months. And... Even after three years of daily cleaning and medication, nothing has fixed Dusty's chronic ear infection. Ooh. Ooh. Not good, is it? Mm -hmm. Has he got an ear canal? No, it's pretty hard to see these days. I'm looking at Dusty's ear and he's got this festering, for want of a better word, horrible ulcerated um, ear canal. I can't see down mm. into an ear canal at all. It's totally obstructed by this, this mass. So it's, look, it's obviously horribly infected and we've got this big knobbly growth there that might just be part of the infection, or I guess it could be something a bit more nasty than that. Oh, mate, you like that. Um, and it smells to high hell. You've been treating his ear for three years, on and yeah, off, pretty or much, pretty much on? Uh, well, pretty much more on than off, yeah. really. Paul and Jeanette have done an amazing job with Dusty. They've been really dedicated. They've just done everything they can to try and get his ear to be fixed. But I really think that unless we do something now, you know, they'll have to seriously consider putting him to sleep because he's in a lot of pain. Obviously we have a lump and we have a change in his voice and the lump happens to be around his throat. So there is reason to be concerned there. At the Bondi Clinic, Pluto, the singing Dalmatian, has a large mass growing on his throat. The worry I've got is if he does have a lump, that is starting to extend its way into that area around his throat and it's starting to affect the nerves, then that throat's not going to operate normally. His larynx isn't going to produce normal sounds. Yeah. And so that's why I think it is worth checking this, this lump out. Chris knows that Pluto responds to music, so he's going to use a highly unusual method to find out how much the lump is affecting the pop star's vocal cords. It's probably never ever been called this before, but today a harmonica is a diagnostic medical instrument. By playing it, I can really test his vocal range and see how his vocal cords are performing. Pluto, are you ready? I'm going to start off with a low pitch and then go to a high. <laughs> that effort he makes to get that high note I feel that he's actually really pushing it and then yeah. he's actually getting out of breath and that's why he's, okay, yeah, yeah. he's drawing in. But there is a definite <clears throat> sort of moment where he has to try to suck air in, which we've never really seen before. Yeah. My worry is that this lump and Pluto missing these high notes may be connected. The important thing now is to take a sample of this lump and test it to see if it could potentially be something nasty that's growing into Pluto's neck and affecting his vocal cords. Okay, that's a pretty good sample there. Mm -hmm. Pluto means the world to Annie. And personally, I mean, I've known him since he was a puppy. So for both of us, what we're really hoping here is that this isn't cancer, because that would be heartbreaking. Okay. Just watch your legs. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim is about to come face to face with one of the world's most dangerous snakes, the King Cobra. If master handler John Weigel can catch it. The biggest problem is that there's so much snake here to work with in such a small area. Okay. After several attempts, John finally pins down the cantankerous cobra. 
So I need some help before it wraps around. Now, a nice little safe early move might be to see if we can get him to expand some of that venom. Oh, look at that. Holy moly. That's about 20 or 30 fatal bites right there. If somebody does get bitten, there's going to be a lot less venom that's put in than before he was milked. So now it's actually time to get that uh, stuck eyelid off. How's that? Can you see him? Yep, that's good. So there it is. Oh, sorry, buddy. It's going to feel better in a minute. Got it. Hey? Oh, wow. Look at that. Imagine that stuck over your eye. Yep, we got it, mate. Let's get out. Yeah, I think you did well. Now comes the most dangerous part of the operation, releasing this cranky cobra without getting bitten. OK, we ready with the door, guys? Yeah, yeah. OK, no hard feelings, mate. Nothing behind you. Operation successful. Big snake. <laughs> Big snake. Yeah. Look at that. Golly. How many bodies in there? Certainly enough to kill a small army. So yeah. uh, better in there than in your arm, I think. Yeah. I'm happy with the end result. And, you know, John might still be the master, but the king is still the king. You know, lumps in the throat have held back some of the world's greatest singers, so it probably makes sense that now Pluto's one of them. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is testing a cell sample taken from a lump growing on Pluto's neck. Good boy. The singing Dalmatian is a long-time patient of Chris's, and the concern is that it could be cancerous. This is where it gets really tricky, because I've known this dog since I was just out of vet school. They almost become a little bit yours, like your own pet. So if this is bad news, yeah, it's going to be a hard one to handle. In the consultation room, Pluto's devoted owner, Annie, is waiting for news. I guess worst fear would be obviously if it's some sort of cancer that's spread significantly and, you know, the prognosis is dire. I think that would be heartbreaking. But no doubt about what I'm looking at, because it's quite unmistakable. All right, so. Had a good look at that slide. It's very nervous. I know, I know. But what we're seeing there are a whole lot of fat droplets. It's a lipoma. Just a collection of fat cells that just keep on producing oil. And they produce so much that actually produced a lump of fat right in the middle of Pluto's throat. So relieved. Yeah. Now, of all the options we could have been looking at, this is probably the one you hope it's going to be. This lump is good news. But it's not explaining why we're getting this change in voice. And really for him to not be able to hit those notes when he has previously, I don't know, I worry that it could be a sign of something a little bit more serious. For him to sing, his vocal cords have to move apart together, okay? If they're not doing that properly, he's not going to hit the notes. And so you start to worry about a laryngeal problem. Chris is now concerned about a condition called laryngeal paralysis. This dangerous disorder causes the airways to be sucked shut, resulting in difficulty breathing or worse, suffocation. So what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, is actually have him in where we give him a, a sedation. We actually have a look at his vocal cords, have a really good close look and see how they move, make sure they're moving normally. It's concerning that he still wants to do more tests and, you know, I think it's really important that we follow through and, and do the tests that Chris recommends. So it's a mess. It is a mess, isn't it? At SASH, devoted owners Jeanette and Paul are desperate to find a solution to Dusty's dreadful ear infection. Think about your own worst. Um, earache and multiplied by about 50 yeah. um, and he's had it for three years. Yeah. What he's been going through is, um, is, is not sustainable. Yeah. Um, Touchwood is in good hands and 
We move on. Jeanette and Paul have spent the last three years trying to fix the courageous pup's ear. Oh, mate, you're very brave, aren't you? Yeah, he's pretty good. You can almost not get in there to clean. Oh, I think you'd be doing amazingly well. Well, I haven't has stuck been. anything down. I can't put the syringe down there and it gets yeah. part way in. Mm, OK. There is no amount of medicines and antibiotics or whatever. Right, we can spend another we'll 18 months that. doing that. We've we'll tried that. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and uh, to be honest, it's cost us a fortune. You know, it's been... Yeah, it's $1,000 yeah. a month on medication. It's <laughs> <laughs> like it's mad. The situation is now so desperate that the only solution is an extreme operation. But I think the only way we're going to fix that is to remove it entirely, and that means he loses his ear canal. Yeah. So he won't have an opening there at all. Okay. Okay. And that sounds really radical, and I'm sure Paul and Jeanette have gone, gosh, you know, what? Unfortunately, there's nothing else we can do. Yeah, it's a pretty drastic step, but... Um... Yeah, I mean, this has been going on for so long. I think that we're happy to look at what the next stage might be, especially if he's, especially if he's going to be so much better. The radical surgery is set for tomorrow. Come on, Dust. Come on, mate. It's the only chance Andrew can give Dusty for a life without constant ear pain. We'll see you soon. All right, Dust, you good boy. You're OK. If we don't do this, he's just going to get worse and worse and be in pain forever. Good boy. Pop star Pluto and his owner Annie are back at the Bondi Clinic for more tests. I think probably the best way to, to approach today would be to take a blood test first of all. Mm -hmm. The thing I'm going to be looking for is just a general health check but specifically his thyroid level. Yeah. Because a low thyroid can sometimes cause them to have a problem with their, their larynx. My hope with Pluto is the fact that his change in voice is just like any other rock star, where their voice just isn't quite as good as it was in their youth. But if I have a fear, it's the fact that he may have laryngeal paralysis. Hello. Meet Pluto. Hello. Alright, so we need to take some bloods. Okay. Pluto's going to have two blood tests. Good boy. One is to really see how all of his organs are performing. But secondly, we need to test his thyroid level. A low thyroid level can often be a cause of laryngeal problems. It's a nerve-wracking wait for Annie. Her devoted Dalmatian's future depends on the results of these tests. Pluto's my best friend. He's, he's pretty amazing. We've had 11 years together and he's got me better trained than any boyfriend's that I ever managed to get me trained. He's, um, he's a pretty impressive dog. Give me another way. Come on. OK, so... Got the results and it's actually pretty good. Mm. We've ruled out a thyroid problem as being the cause. Metabolically is good. I really think we're probably at the stage where we need to have a look inside. Okay. See sure. what's happening. Yeah. The cause of Pluto's problem remains a mystery. The fact we're not seeing anything abnormal on these blood results really says that we need to act now. And that involves looking directly at Pluto's larynx. Hey Dusty, hey stinky dog, how's that ear? Beautiful. All right, you good boy, get you asleep? It's bad news. Well, well we're great. definitely gonna make you better. Oh, yuck. A CT scan is needed so that Andrew can see just how deep Dusty's ear infection is. I'm looking to see what problems we might have in the middle ear, which is a big, bony, normally air-filled cavity. But when you've got chronic infection like this, there can be a whole pool of infection sitting in there, and I want to see what's going on. We've got the scan of the skull out, and so that's normal. We go across the other side, and we've got this huge bulbous extension of this middle ear. All of this is infection and it's slowly expanded this bony cavity so that it's now about three times the size that it should be. The results are worse than expected, meaning the already risky surgery has just become even more dangerous. Because there's so much infection in there, we're going to be really close to his inner ear and there's a chance, as careful as we'll be, 
will damage that and uh, that could affect his balance. The singing Dalmatian has suddenly become unable to reach high notes when he howls and has begun sounding raspy. All right, let's move pretty quickly. Chris is worried he could be suffering from a serious condition called laryngeal paralysis. The key with this anaesthetic for Pluto is to make it light because we need him to be still and not moving, but we still need his larynx to show its normal movement. So we just need to get his mouth wide open so mm -hmm. if we can get... So I'm just looking into his throat here and, geez, his vocal cords are really swollen and they've got some really bright redness over the top of them. Just everything's angry up there. I mean, you couldn't expect a human to sing properly when their throat looks like this. The inside of Pluto's mouth should be a nice, smooth pink colour. Unfortunately today, it's far from that. It's red and it's inflamed in areas where it shouldn't be. At SASH, vet nurse Carissa Simone has arrived with a very special parcel for emergency vet Lisa Chimes. The three kittens, less than three weeks old, were found dumped on the side of a busy road. Carissa is not only an excellent nurse here, but in her spare time she runs this amazing organisation called Little Paws Orphan Rescue. But at the moment she's got uh, some tiny little kittens that have been abandoned and she's brought them in for me to have a look at. Right, so this is Mario. Mario. Little Mario. Hey Mario, let's just have a listen. Just gonna check if he's got a heart murmur. I'm looking at these kittens and my heart just breaks for them because they are so tiny. And unfortunately, this happens too often here. We see so many kittens that are abandoned, orphaned and homeless. Okay, that all sounds good. Let's have a look. Eyes nice and clear, nose nice and clear. Looking for a cleft palate. That looks good. You look pretty good, don't you? Except for the fleas. They are covered in fleas. Absolutely covered. I've got to get these treated, huh? You might think that a tiny little flea, big deal. But when a kitten weighs two to 300 grams, they are that small and they are infested with fleas all over them. The fleas are actually sucking their blood. With that burden, it can cause anemia and that can be life-threatening. Just everything's angry up there. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is trying to solve the mystery of why pop star Pluto has lost his singing voice. The one thing I want to do is just have a look down this. Chris will now use an endoscope to look further into Pluto's throat to try to figure out what exactly is going on. So there are vocal cords there. You see they're nice and open. You see that redness? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that does look sore. His larynx is moving. Mm -hmm. Certainly those vocal cords are, are able to, to stay open. It's not the closure which you often see with laryngeal paralysis. Mm -hmm. But everything around his larynx is actually... This is so red. So red. So... The feeling is that he's actually got a chronic laryngitis. This is good news. Laryngitis is uncommon in dogs, but Pluto's case is treatable with a combination of antibiotics and anti-inflammatories. Now that we've seen all we need to see, it's time to wake Pluto up and give any good news. You look like a real rock star now. Sleeping off a big one. Hmm? magazine away. Okay, so what we found, we're not looking at laryngeal paralysis, but what Pluto actually has is laryngitis. He's, got, he's actually got an infection in there. 
oh. and a long-standing infection. All the great singers have had tours cancelled from <laughs> laryngitis. And he's just joined the list. Wow, that's so not what I expected. I know. I've never heard of a dog having laryngitis, so <laughs> I'm incredibly surprised. It's a, yeah, it's a good result. Just down right at the base of his ear canal now, so I'm almost about to separate it from his, from his head and I can just see the infection starting to ooze out. At Sash, Dusty's delicate ear surgery has reached a critical moment. As he wakes up, well, he should get a bit of an idea of whether I have upset his balance at all. So I'm really hoping that hasn't happened. Carpet and fleas as well. Hey, I know. Let's have a listen. At Sash, Lisa is checking over the second of three dumped three week old kittens. This one's pretty good. Let's get your last brother out. Oh. Okay, last little baby. A little tabby. This is Eddie. Look at you. Eddie. And I assume you are also covered in fleas? Yes. Yes, you are. You look pretty good, Ed. Your brothers as well. So how do you think their overall health is, Liz? So they look pretty good, but the biggest issue for me is their flea burden. Those fleas are going to suck their blood and um, the kittens are going to get very, very ill. So that should be the top of our list. Let's treat them for fleas. So they're so tiny, I'll just put it on my hand and just wipe it all over them. Yeah, we're going to get those fleas. We're going to get them all. I should probably get them into a new bed as well because I have no doubt the fleas are setting up home in that bedding. Yeah, there's one. See it? Mm. With the flea treatment complete, Carissa gives the tiny orphans a much needed feed. <laughs> You're a little piggy. <laughs> Having a good suck on that bottle, huh? In a few weeks' time, these guys are going to need to have their vaccinations to make sure that they don't get any life-threatening diseases. And then once they've had a full set of vaccinations, they'll be fine to be adopted. So that will be the next challenge for us. Hey, little man. Following radical surgery to remove Dusty's chronically infected ear canal, Andrew is anxious to see if there's any nerve or middle ear damage. I just want to check to see if we've done any damage to his facial nerve and see what his balance system is doing. I always check it as soon as I can when they recover because it's our biggest worry. I can blink. It's a little bit weak compared with the other side. So I suspect that I've stretched that nerve a little bit. Certainly haven't permanently damaged it. Often if they've damaged their balance system, their eyes just flick sideways like this really constantly and he's not doing that, so that's good. So I mean, that, that's really encouraging because I was really worried about that. I, I personally think that Dusty will actually be feeling better. He had a horrible earache, he had a headache and I think all that pressure is going to be relieved. I, I, I think he's actually sighing a sigh of relief now. Pop star Pluto is going home with his biggest fan, owner Annie. He's a bit under the weather. He's got a rock star size hanging over. Oh, Pluto. After concerns about cancer and vocal paralysis, it turns out the singing Dalmatian has a case of laryngitis. Very happy to see his mum. OK, hey. so here are his medications. Antibiotics. Cold and flu tablets. Basically. Antibiotics, anti-inflammatories. Mm -hmm. So they're going to treat the infection that he has in his throat. Okay, fantastic. Right. Now, I'm gonna to speak to your neighbours and if I hear anything even close <laughs> to Billy Joel, Bruce Springsteen, or any other guy who sings the harmonica, there's gonna be trouble, all right? 
All right, and we promise to, when he returns to full voice, to serenade you. That would be a, a delight. <laughs> when you consider what we could have been dealing with here, this is really the best possible outcome. In a few weeks, Pluto should be back to his old self, probably singing away. I can't wait for that encore performance. Take care. He's out of here. <laughs> All right, exit stage left. <laughs> Bye. Hey, Dusty. How you going, mate? How you doing? You're looking all right. Should we get you out and put you on the ground? See if you're not all wobbly. Days after Dusty's drastic ear surgery, the moment of truth. Has the operation affected his balance? How are you doing? One of the big problems with this surgery is when we're deep in there, we can potentially damage sort of his balance centre. And they can literally wake up with their head on, a, on an angle like this and even rolling around in their cage. Gee, that looks all right, doesn't it? Hey, how's that balance? Hey, that's pretty good, isn't it? I think I was worried about nothing. With Dusty given the all clear, it's time for him to go home. Come on, come on. In reception, a special visitor has come to welcome Dusty back to the family. So we've brought Mia, Dusty's sister, with us today. She's been very lonely with Adam. She's pretty attached to Dusty and she's been at home crying. So hopefully, it'll be a happy reunion when she finally sees him. Hey, Dusty. Who's that? Who's that? Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. Yes. Hello. Oh, she's very really much sure. Oh, I like your mobile. Do you like his haircut? I love the haircut, Can I have a look? <laughs> oh, wow. So he's got a bit of a swelling just yeah. in there. Yep. But it's yeah. So his ear canal used to be there. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah, it is I'm not touching it. Stop marking that. <laughs> Dusty looks really good. Yeah, really happy to see yeah, him. He's, he's good. obviously well, but you know, the ear looks really kind of clean and he's just um, a different dog. Good result all round. Thank you so much. That is a pleasure. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. All right, it's a great It's a lovely dog, and I'm sure he's. He, he'll be feeling so much yeah. better. Yeah. 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 See you later, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. See you, Dust. When Dusty gets home, his life will be totally different. He's not going to be in pain anymore. He's not going to smell anymore. Paul and Jeanette don't have to put up with that smell, and they don't also have to put up with having to medicate him every day, twice a day. It's going to be so much better for everybody. Look what I've got. Look what I've got. It's good news for the three orphaned kittens that were found abandoned and infested with fleas. These little kittens' lives would have been very different if they weren't brought in. They probably would have become feral cats. And it's our job as vets and the wider community to get these cats off the street, desex them and find them forever homes. Betty and Leo have found homes. Today, it's Mario's turn. Where do you think this kitten's going to sleep? My room. And my room. And my room. No, you're scared of it. No. <laughs> yeah. It can sleep on the floor. Karen and her three daughters, Chelsea, Jessica and Carly, are eager to make little Mario part of their family. I think it's really nice that we can take in this little boy and look after him and he has a home. Hello. Must be Karen. How are you going? Lisa, nice to meet you. Hi, girls. Hello. Are you excited to meet your new kitten? Yeah. Yeah? Come. <laughs> oh, of course you can. You guys have the same hair colour. Just a little. So, girls, we called him Mario. What are you going to call him? Tango. 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 Tango is officially a ladies' man now. He is just being passed from girl to girl. They can't get enough of him. There's lots of cuddles and kisses and affection, and I think he is going to be absolutely delighted with his new home. You're here. You are home. Where? Okay, follow you. Fine. Of course. 
It's been eight weeks and Chris is back to see if pop star Pluto's voice has returned. Oh, I know. She's in the studio, isn't she? <laughs> He's quite the doorman, isn't he? How are you? Hi, Chris. How are you? Good to see Lovely you. Lovely to see you. And how is he? How was your greeting? Uh, thorough. Clara, well, yeah. he's a lot more enthusiastic about life at the moment. It's a very different Pluto today. Not only is he seeming happier and healthier, he's being very welcoming. In the vet clinic, he didn't want to bar at me. But today, in his own home, he's the perfect host. Let's have a little feel around his lymph glands. Make sure they're not still <laughs> raised. OK, they're a normal size again, which is good. I can look into where these tonsils are at the back there. Yeah. A lot of that redness is gone. So how are we going to test this voice? There's only one way to test this magical voice. I have the musical ability of a five-year-old. Pluto, it goes a little something like this. Good. Let's go a little higher. Better. Oh, good note. Going on how Pluto looks and sounds today, it's safe to say that his laryngitis has been cured. It's always going to be a risk that it could come back, but at least then we're going to know the trademark sign. That's those not so perfect pitch notes. See you, buddy. Oh, wow. Oh, couldn't you resist, really are the flavour of the month, aren't I'll see. you? Oh, this is my way of rubbing it onto you. Hey. <laughs> I'll see you later. See you, Pluto. Bye bye, buddy. Bye, Chris. Thank you. That's all right. No worries. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell, and we'll see you on our next video.